You know, the word normal sounds pretty good right now. We'd all like to get back to some sort of normalcy, but of course we want to do it uh, the healthy way. And if you've been missing out on shopping, good news, you're going to be able to do it kind of today. So retail to go starts today. That means stores can offer curbside pickup or delivery. Governor Abbott says he plans on announcing the next phase and reopening Texas's economy on Monday. And there's a lot of anticipation for that. So, so many people are eagerly awaiting for businesses to reopen. It's not really just a shop, but people just want to get back to work. The health crisis has now turned into a financial nightmare that does not look like it's going to get better anytime soon, Hannah. That's what has people so concerned. I was speaking to an economist yesterday on Midday yeah. who was giving the comparison of what we're going through right now to the Depression era. And I think people have a lot of um, have a yeah. hard time wrapping their mind around that. Yes, it, it, that comparison, it pans out with the numbers. I think we all have this feeling in our guts. We know that um, we're in the middle of a historic moment on so many levels, including the economy and the workforce. Let's take a look at the latest numbers right now. We're starting to get a better look at the bigger picture of what's going on. In fact, like Kara was saying, we are seeing levels that we haven't seen since the Great Depression of the 1930s. Right now, about one in six Americans have at least temporarily lost work because of the coronavirus. This is according to data from the government in all. 26 million Americans have filed for jobless claims since this all began. We are seeing the lawmakers respond, passing an additional $500 billion spending package to help those businesses, hospitals that need more support. It's clear that we see this all over, including here in North Texas. In the last week, we've even seen cities reacting, like North Richland Hills. Yesterday, they announced they'd be furloughing non-emergency city operations for three days in May to offset their budget. This after a drop in sales tax revenue and other taxes. We've also reported on the ups and downs of JCPenney uh, well before this, but now we're really seeing trouble. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that Penny's is in advanced talks for bankruptcy funding with a group of lenders. No word, though, on what that would mean exactly for workers here in North Texas. Like we have said, though, this is an historic moment. There is help, though. We want to give you guys information that you can use to navigate the programs from the government, also other grants that might be out there. Jason Wheeler has been doing an incredible job laying that out. And this morning's On the Money, he really helps you walk through that process and get around any maybe roadblocks. Take a look. Another 280,000 Texans filed for unemployment last week. That is up from the week before. In a little more than a month now, 1.3 million people in this state have filed jobless claims. I spoke with the director of the Workforce Commission. He says they have paid out $1.7 billion in benefits. In fact, as early as next week, the agency could exhaust its entire trust fund. Let me assure everybody, you will get a benefit. It's not gonna be a reduced benefit because we're running out of money. It'll be the benefit you deserve, the benefit that you've earned. You will keep getting your benefits. They'll find the money. Now, a lot of you haven't been able to file because password problems are requiring that you call in, but you can't get through. I have some new info that may help you out with that problem. And I've got information about some of the biggest groups of callers that the TWC says don't even need to be jamming the phone lines right now. It is all at Jason Wheeler TV, where you'll also find my interview with the TWC director. Speaking of big money, major sports have lost a lot, but the NFL is in a league of its own. Its season hasn't been affected, at least not yet. So this year's draft, the remote version, is a big deal for starved sports fans and for the advertisers trying to reach the ultimate captive audience right now. Disney reports unprecedented demand for commercial space. 100 different brands advertising this year during the draft. 60 of them are newcomers to the broadcast. It's also a rare bright spot for sports betting platforms who expect this to be the most bet on draft ever. They anticipate as much as $20 million in wagers on the draft, which typically draws about a million gambling dollars. More info on everything we've discussed at Jason Wheeler TV, where you go to stay right on the money. Yeah, and Jason's really the guy to follow for all things business, finance, economics, uh, especially right now. And as we slowly start to see more businesses open, government leaders have maintained the same message. Testing really is the key to reopening. And today, three new sites are opening up across North Texas. Our Ariel Placencia joins us live with more on how you can get tested this weekend. Ariel? 
Yeah, hey, good morning, Sonia. So it's no secret that more testing is coming here to North Texas, right? And so I just want to remind everybody that as a result, as we test more people, we're probably going to see the number of cases continue to rise just because it's a numbers game, right? We're testing more people. As you mentioned, Sonia, let's talk about three testing sites that are opening today, and we'll show you where they are. One is in Arlington, and it's free to Tarrant County residents, but you do have to pre-register on the city of Arlington's website. Walgreens is also going to open rapid testing sites at locations in Fort Worth and Dallas that you see there, and you're going to be able to get results in about 15 minutes. Now, as we talk about testing, you might have heard the word antibody being thrown around, so I just wanted to take a moment this morning and talk about that. So across the country, scientists are rolling out blood tests that look for antibodies, which are proteins that the immune system makes to fight off infection. Now, these tests, they don't detect active infection like the tests for those who are currently sick get. They're intended to tell who had previously been infected and then successfully fought off COVID-19. It allows more people to know if they're able to donate possible life-saving plasma. Now we're talking about this this morning because there was an antibody survey done in New York, a state that we know has been hit hard by COVID-19. Officials there are saying that more evidence is emerging that shows far more New Yorkers have had the coronavirus than the number confirmed by lab tests. The governor there said that knowing how many people have antibodies could potentially help decide when to reopen parts of the state. Now we do know that antibody testing is happening here in North Texas and for those interested, we've got more information over on WFA.com. One more note that's happening this weekend for my Hood County residents. The Hood County News is reporting that there's going to be free COVID-19 testing on Sunday. That's for residents who have one or more symptoms. And if you're interested, I've got more information over on my social media pages. Sonia. OK, Ariel, that's all great information. Thank you. Uh, a lot of you guys have been asking me about the guidelines when it comes to testing. So here's the deal in Dallas County. Judge Clay Jenkins extended testing guidelines to any North Texas essential employees. So who is that? That includes first responders, DART drivers, health care workers, grocery store and essential retail store workers, even if they're not showing symptoms. And testing in Dallas County is also available to people over 65 and anyone with underlying health conditions. For everyone else, you got to have a fever of at least 99.6. We've shared resources again on WFAA.com as well as on our app. OK, it is 641 now time for your morning rush. Senator Elizabeth Warren's older brother Don Reed has died from COVID-19. He was 86. She tweeted a series of pictures of her brother saying he was charming and funny. Warren also thanked the nurses and frontline workers who took care of him. COVID-19 cases in Africa have apparently skyrocketed. The World Health Organization says the continent registered a 43% jump in cases just last week. The organization also warns the virus could kill more than 300,000 people as testing there is very limited. Japanese officials trying to figure out how almost 50 cruise ship crew members tested positive for COVID-19. Now researchers are puzzled because no passengers were on board and the ship has been docked for three months in Japan. A military medical team plans to assist in testing the remaining 576 crew members. And that is your morning rush.